So I'm going to make this nice and dark. Sets in maybe indicator over here a little bit. And I'm going to indicate this area because he's got this little scarring. I think it's acne scarring or something over here. I'm just going to indicate that a little. There we go. Now I'm going to work on this area right above here, this pad of his cheek. Once again, fairly thick. I'm going to move his eye up a little bit. He's got crooked eyes. I've always noticed that. His left eye, which is on our right side, is a little higher. Despite, I mean, on top of being not display on top of being a little wider open most of the time. That that uh, asymmetrical quality of him, that's something I want to include in my piece. A lot of people tend to leave things like that out. That's something I want. You want to draw him. You don't want to correct something that's not average about him. That's the beauty of Bill Murray. That's what's wonderful. That's what makes him him is the fact that he is asymmetrical, the fact that his eye is lazy sometimes, his one eye. And that's exactly why he looks the way he does. And if you take that away, you're just, you're just completely ignoring everything that you're doing as a caricature artist. If you correct it, then I don't know what you're doing. You're making a glamour shot. You're, uh, you're trying to not offend Bill Murray who are we kidding? Bill Murray can take it. So I'm going to uh, erase some of these. Eyebrows are fun. They're tricky to do when you're doing this sort of a drawing. You have to make a decision about them, stylistic decision, more so than the lines of the face because they're they're represented by a bunch of weird strokes, and you got to choose what you're doing. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna think about them a little bit later, but I'm just gonna block them in like that right now. I'm going to see where I'm at with this. That's looking all right. Not as dark as I want, but I still am going to work on it. Probably for at least a few more minutes. I'll bring this out and then tuck it right in. That's a really fun area. He's got a lot of fun stuff going on in his face, and you'd be a fool not to play with it, not to have fun with it. All right, I'm going to erase this line, just create that edge a little better. And now his hair. I want to simplify his hair without losing the quality that makes it unique. So I'm going to represent it with little clumps. This area's got combed back. I'm going to enjoy that. And then this just flips right around. I'm not going to make it as, as high as it is because I want to, because of the space I have here. Maybe I'll scale it down and leave room for it. That's a great thing about digital painting is you have lots of room to work with. You can always create more room to work with. You're not bound to anything immediately. All right, so I'm going to rework that line a little bit, just like I'm erasing, just like I'm drawing with a pencil. Or just a scratchy pen that I can magically erase with. <laughs> and I want to bring his head out a little bit more. Do it like this. And this is the great thing about digital, once again, is I can erase that or add to it and then erase it right on the inside. I can add to one side of it and then take away from the other side of it. And I love that. Don't want to get too square with this head. There we go. And now I'm going to bring this down. All right, I'm capturing the way his hair is here in this photo. It's um, not necessarily how his hair always is, but I enjoy it. Sometimes that's that's one of the beauties I was talking about that in another podcast. Don't know if you've watched it yet, but if you find one with an animal in it, I am talking about choices that the artist makes when they do their piece, not just choices in the piece, but choices in the reference. That says a lot about what you're trying to do with your piece. If you're drawing something and you pick the most boring photo of it or reference and you don't change much in it, then, you know, it's uh it's only as interesting as what you're referencing. If you're drawing an assembly line. To me that's boring, you know, some people like that, but to me that's boring. So 
you can choose something that's a little more exciting to yourself or to the viewer. And that's why I chose this photo. It's simple. It's got a good likeness of him. It looks like Bill Murray. Sometimes photos don't really represent the person very well. This one does. It looks like him. And um, it definitely it definitely has some interesting qualities like the hair, like the lines in it. I chose the flash photo reference because of the lines. I usually don't like that when I'm rendering. And I've mentioned that before because uh, then you've just got harsh light straight on from the front. And I don't like flash photos. But this one helps me dictate the lines of his face, the surfaces. And I use that to my advantage, and there's nothing wrong with that. You've got to use, take the advantage that you have in front of you and work with the piece. So I'm just blocking in some of these big shapes like his, his collar for now. I'll clean it up in a minute, but my line is starting to get a little more confident because I'm, even though this tool isn't fit for what I'm doing with it, it's, um, it's just a tool. That's way you have to look at it. You know, I had someone one time laugh at me when I said I'm using Photoshop 7. And I said, why? I pretty much just paint like I'm painting acrylic. I paint on mostly one layer. Sometimes I use a couple layers. The layers didn't disappear in Photoshop 7, did they? And he just laughed at me and said, wow, you're living in the Stone Age. And this was two years ago, mind you, when CS had just come out or it was just about to come out. I just told him, you know, I didn't get CS, big whoop. I will one day, I'm sure. There'll be a time when I find some reason to. But for right now, there is no no real immediate need for me to use uh, Photoshop CS or CS2 or whatever the heck we're at right now. Because all the frills and the, the bells and whistles that go into updating that, they're not things that I use. And it's good to have the technology, but it's amazing that someone would, would scoff at the materials you use when you can use you can do an amazing drawing with a stick and a piece of parchment by dr dipping the stick in a fire and using like you know that charcoal that scratchy burnt wood to draw with you can still get a great drawing out of it so it's just about using tools the computer is just another tool photoshop's another tool i can i can if i ever want to do a line based drawing in photoshop i'm going to have to learn something better than this because this tool this brush is not the best one for it but for right now it's working. It's getting the point across. I'm just I'm talking about it a method. And these lines are going to be light, so maybe I'll change their color in the end. And uh, I like his forehead lines. It shows his age a little bit. I'm going to drop down here into his hairline and his sideburns. I like these little S curves. That's a good element. S curves and straight lines next to each other. They work really great. Curved and straight. Learned that from Steve Silver. Don't know if he's the one that, that came up with it. Probably not. Maybe he is. I don't know. I just know that I tried it and he's right. It works. It's something that you can't refute. Alright, so I'm nearly finished with the layout of this. At this point I'm going to go back and clean it up a little bit just for a few minutes and then I'm just gonna leave it as is I might drop some color on it just to to sell the effect right now because this is just a sketch it's not a not a finished piece just for uh, just for this podcast to talk about exaggeration to show my choices to show my work my process so you can hopefully get something out of it alright so there's Bill Murray Let's see if I can drop this out. Yep, I still have an impression of what I'm looking at. See, there's my pencil sketch. Well, you could call it a pencil sketch. I dropped the opacity, and then I drew right on top of it, and that's what I get. So now I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to clean up some of these lines. Just for a little while, I'm going to up uh, the flow on my brush so it's a little more solid line. I'm going to drop this down in opacity now. No, I'm not going to do that, because I can save some of these. I'll save some time. There we go. So I've got this black line here, top of his eye. 